We have been looking at Matthew chapter 24. And I think it's more than appropriate that we're looking at this as things are going on in Israel. And if you have not gone back and watched Mondays through Wednesdays, or excuse me, through Thursdays devotional, let's go back and watch them so we can get the entire context of Matthew chapter 24. And what we see so far up until verse 33, 34, is that all these things were going to happen in that generation. All the signs, all the wars, rumors of wars, the destruction of Jerusalem was all about their generation. And that coming of Christ is the coming of his kingdom, his coming in power and gathering people from all over the world to come to God through him. And all that would occur in that generation. And they were to watch for those signs. But now we get to a point where something changes. We end it with verse 35. And I think that's a transitional verse. One, I think it's a, an idiom to say that what Jesus has said is true. But I think it also turns the table to talk about something else. So let's pick up in Matthew 24 and verse 35. Matthew 24 and verse 35. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But of that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. For just in the days of Noah were, so the coming of the Son of Man will be. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. So they did not understand until the flood came and took them all away. So will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then there will be two in the field. One will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding grain at the mill, and one will be taken, and one will be left. Therefore, verse 30, 42, stay awake, for you do not know the day your Lord is coming. But be sure of this, if the head of the house had known what time the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have allowed his house to be broken into. For this reason, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming in an hour when you do not think he will. We'll stop right there for today. Here is where Jesus changes the message. The message is no longer about the destruction of Jerusalem, but he's answering that other question that the disciples ask. When is the end? Jesus says, nobody knows. He's just said there are signs of the destruction of Jerusalem. Now he says nobody knows. Only the Father knows when this final end will be. So yes, Jesus does answer that question. But he says, just be ready. Just live for him. Now I know there are some that have said, well, verse 40 and 41 talk about being left behind and taken. And, and that's premillennial doctrine, is that what that's teaching? And I would suggest, no, it's not. I think the implication there is, and please understand this, is one will be taken by the angels to go into heaven and others will be left for their destruction in hell. I say that because of what he says about the days of Noah. He says in verse 39, they did not understand the flood until it came and took them away. So there'll be some who will be taken unto heaven and others will be left behind to be taken away into eternal destruction not taken to heaven for seven years while there's tribulation on earth. There's nothing in that text about that. So he says, be aware. That be aware is live for Christ while you were here. Because you don't know when the end is coming. Here's the message. Here's the lesson for you and for me. The signs of Matthew 24 are about the destruction of Jerusalem. The signs of the, end of, of the end of the ages, the end of the world is this. Christ comes. And he comes as a thief in the night. It will be a surprise. No thief says, hey, I want you to watch for these signs, then you'll know I'm coming. There are no signs for the end of time. Other than the trumpet that signals the end. 
Some suggest that verses 40 and 41 talk about things that happen at different times during the day. And so that no matter where you are on the earth, you're going to see Jesus coming. Maybe that's the message. At least it's very interesting to see that that is possible. So when he does come, whenever that is, the question is, will you and I be ready? Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, our Father in heaven, we again thank you for this day. We again thank you for your blessings and for your care and for your love. And Father, we are concerned about the events going on in our world. And Father, we pray for those that are being impacted specifically. And Father, we pray for our world leaders that things can be done to keep this from escalating into something more than it already is. And that they can even work to resolve what's going on. Father, we know that one day Christ will return. He'll return and those in the graves will come forth. Those who are in a right relationship with you through Christ will go on to eternal reward. And those who are not will go on to an eternal destruction. And Father, we know that when he comes, those of us who are alive and remain will find ourselves resurrected to life or sent away to eternal destruction. Father, help us all to, to turn and to see and to follow so that when Christ returns, whenever that is, we are found ready. We are found working. We are found right in him. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining me and allowing me to join you. We're going to spend one more day on Matthew 24. I look forward to that. I hope you do as well. Until that time that we're together again, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day.